Hey everyone, welcome again to The Way It Is. I'm your host, Luca Andalfato, with Team Luca First at Remax Service First Realty. <sighs> Whew, big breath. Uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in, and uh, now I've gotten used to saying this, so if you like this, please subscribe, ring the bell, do all the stuff you're supposed to do uh, to help get more views and everything, so thank you. So, carrying on with our mayoral candidate uh, uh, interviews, we've got Mayor Patterson with us today. So, Mayor Patterson, thank you for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Thank you. Um, so, he's the third, and then we actually have uh, Ivan Stoichevic is joining us next week, and I hope I That's didn't right. mispronounce his name, so I apologize in advance. Um, so, we've had the two other candidates, Tina Fraser and Skyler. Yep. Uh, you know, obviously everybody's got their viewpoints and everything like that. Sure. Um, so, one of the questions I had, and I'm going to start off with the big one, okay? Sure. Um, this is your going to be a third term for you if you yep. get elected. Yeah. I have to think that a mayor's, mayor's job is no different than anybody's job. It's a work in progress. So what do you feel you did right? <laughs> what do you feel you did wrong? And what do you think you can improve on, I guess? Wow, that is a that that's is a the big, big one. That's, that's a the big <laughs> question. It's a, it's a great question. Well, I mean, the first thing uh, that I will say is it's been an incredible experience uh, being able to, to to help lead this city, uh, to be mayor over the last eight years. Um, you really you learn so much, mm, and imagine. you know what? Even after eight years, I learn new things every day, and I think that that's the first first thing that comes to mind is just you know you really you really rely on the community, you rely on people around you. I mean, this is a team effort, right? And right. I think that that's, that's, if anything, one of the things that I think I've learned the most uh, is that maybe when I started off, you know, you, you have some ideas and you have some, some thoughts about things you want to accomplish and then you hear from the community and, and you, you, you get their ideas. Right. And you know, this is how you work uh, as a team and you, you, you learn about, about partnerships. And I think that that's what we've learned through the pandemic. And I think about the last couple of years, the number of times I was in my office and I would think about, I don't have no idea what to do. How do we tackle this problem? There's no roadmap, right. there's no manual, right? In my <laughs> desk about yeah. like, how do, you, how do you lead the city in the midst of a pandemic? But, yeah. uh, but being able to pull people around you from different sectors, business and social services and, uh, and different agencies and we all kind of work together. Um, that I think is, is a model. I think we hit on something there. So, so I think that, you know, to say what I think I've done right, I mean, obviously I'm, you know, I'm super proud of some of the projects we've been able to push forward. You know, yeah. the fact that we're, we're building more housing now than we've ever built before. We've got the third crossing almost ready to go. Yep. We expanded the airport, we expanded Breakwater Park and, you know, some great waterfront uh, initiatives. Uh, we've done uh, more on supportive and affordable housing for the last few years than we ever have before. Um, but uh, there's still lots of work to be done, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that that's where it's saying, okay, well, uh, how do we regroup and how do we tackle some of the problems we haven't been able to hit yet? So, and, and you know, I asked, uh, you know, the other candidates uh, in the, uh, the answer that came to mind from Skyler, uh, lovely young man, yeah. by the way, yeah. uh, super impressed with him. Yeah. Um, you know, I said, uh, is Mayor Patterson doing a bad job? Like, you know, what, what, what makes you jump into sure. the ring? And, and he had an interesting comment and he certainly was very uh, uh, complimentary, yep. uh, but he said, you know, his issue was with the voter apathy or apathy in the community in terms of that your position or maybe whole all of municipal politics uh, in general and everything like that. So how do you respond to that? Do you see that? In, have you seen it or, or is that something that's on your radar? Absolutely. I mean, it's a huge issue. And, you know, full credit to, to, to Skyler for, for jumping in and seeing that. I think that, you know, I, I think he's absolutely right uh, that... Um, you know, voter, voter turnout in the last provincial election was probably the lowest it's ever been. Yes. Yep. And municipal election turnouts are generally even lower than provincial election turnout. So I think that there is definitely a concern there. And, and I think, you know, when I've been going to the door over the last few weeks, you know, you're, you're hearing about people that are, I think are just trying to figure out life and just be able yeah. to just make ends meet. And you think about the pressures on housing and, and affordability or trying to find a family doctor. I mean, there are, there are some big challenges that people are facing. And I think that, you know, one of the things that's most important when you are in this job is you have to convey hope. It doesn't mean you necessarily can fix everything right away. Mm -hmm. But when you can tell people, hey, I hear you, we're working on these problems and yeah, they're huge and yeah, the city may be able to fix it, but here's what we can do. Here's what we are working on. 
And I think that, you know, trying to promote that engagement to say, yeah, your voice matters. You know, I mean, there's some issues where, you know, you, you may have an opinion and I have a different opinion. And, yeah. you know, that's that's the, the rough and tumble of being in a community together. Sometimes uh, things go our way, sometimes they don't. But at the end of the day, we're all in this together. Uh, and so the more people that are active and expressing their, their thoughts and views and ideas and opinions, the better outcomes we're going to get as a city. No question and, and well said. And, and, and you know, I, I, I was actually... Um, because I follow the feeds and everything, and, and uh, you know, we have had some successes, right? I mean, and I'm not uh, trying to pump your tires solely, but yes, the third crossing, which I have to actually eat my words because there have been clients in the past that I said, that won't happen in my lifetime or my kid's <laughs> lifetime. I don't think that's ever going to happen. So I'm eating crow now, but I think it'll be a good thing. Um, nine new doctors that was announced, that's yep. huge, yep. right? Yep. And so uh, whatever initiatives were taken for that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but now we, we, this housing affordability homelessness thing yep. is ugly huge. and it's not going away. It's huge. Yep. I mean, I know it's daunting. There's so many layers yep. to that issue. Yep. I get an argument, so I don't get an argument. I try to avoid the arguments because people don't fully understand and appreciate sure. all of the layers. Sure. <sighs> what do you say to that? What's what? Like, I mean, given everything that you just said in terms of you know, it's you, you look for stakeholders and participants, and <sighs> where do you start? Well, I mean, I think I'll say this: this is such a giant, complex issue. Uh, and, and when I speak with mayors across the province, we all say is the number one biggest issue, most difficult. And, and I think the answer is there is no one silver bullet. I think it's doing as many different things as we can all to push, push this forward. Right. So that's everything from getting as much new housing built as we can, because let's face it, our population is growing. If, if we're not seeing an increase in, in rental housing and new townhouses and duplexes and all of those things, then yeah. the prices are just gonna keep going up. And then recognizing that there's more and more people that are having a hard time making ends meet. They can't afford housing. Right. So investing in new affordable housing projects, which basically means subsidized housing. So, yeah. so ways we can provide public subsidy so that people can uh, get a place, even if it's at a, at a lower rental rate, uh, so that they have that housing. Yeah. And then that goes all the way to, you know, those in our, our most vulnerable residents uh, who are struggling uh, with, with homelessness, you know, and many of them have other complex health needs. I, I often say it's, when you look at the homeless issue, it's not often just even just a housing issue, it's a healthcare issue, Absolutely. right? There's all sorts yeah. of different supports that they need. And so, you know, as a city, we can't solve that on our own, but you know, we've gone and we've, we've bought properties and uh, gotten funding to be able to renovate those properties, create, you know, supportive housing environments for people to, to be able to find housing, but also, right, the, the, the mental health or uh, addiction sports or whatever it is that they need. Yeah. And so that's where, right, to that answer, it's, it's social service agencies, it's, uh, it's private sector, it's public sector, it's the city, right? That's the job of a mayor is to kind of, how do you bring everybody to the table and say, okay, how do we brainstorm? How do we make this project work? And everybody has to do their part. Yeah. And so I think that's the issue. It's not about pointing a finger and saying, this, this one entity or this one sector yeah. has to solve this. This is, yeah. this is our community. We have to solve this together. I, 100%. I, and I mean, you, you certainly raised a point that I believe is one of the key ingredients to taking the first step to, to solving this problem. And that is, you almost need a facility that would house full-time staff, you know, that are skilled in social work yep. or mental illness yep. or even yep. even nurse practitioners or someone that can dispense meds or something yep. like that because yep. it's a 24-7 facility that people need to come and go from or yep. be, you know, housed in or whatever because there are those other layers to all of those problems, yep. right? And they then, need a, it's called wraparound support, right? right. Yeah. And, and the good news is that right now under construction is is one of those facilities for youth, another one for women and women and children with, at risk. Uh, we have our indigenous housing center that we were able to open earlier this year. Right. And so no one project is gonna solve this, but you get enough of these all in different parts of the city, all with great agencies. Each of these is a different partnership with an agency where the city's contributed some dollars. Yep. And this is where you do it. It's one, 
one life at a time, one person at a time to be able to, to make a difference. And, and you know, because uh, <laughs> here's the other problem with the world we live in, and I'm sure the municipality is no different. You can't get people to find to fill positions, right? So how do you go? How do you? How does Kingston, as a municipality, now start bringing in talent or hiring talent to come in and do these jobs? Because everybody's looking for the same people that are seemingly not there. You have hit on one of the biggest issues in the community. Every where I go, every business, social service agency, and any institution I'm talking to, finding the staff. Is, yeah. has become the biggest, the biggest issue. And so, you know, so again, I'm, I think we need to take the same approach with this that we did with housing is bring everybody together. So, so I'm talking about a, or I'm proposing a, a, an action-based community forum where we're gonna bring St. Lawrence College and Queens and businesses and public sector yep. and social agencies all to the same table and say, okay, let's, let's talk about our, how, do we, how do we help connect people, find people to connect with jobs. And so, yeah, sometimes it might be bringing in people to the community, but there's a lot of people here in the community that I think can fill right with the right training. I would think so. And, and that's one of the things we talk about now is like um, uh, micro-credentials, where it's like a short, you know, just get somebody in there, get the training they need as quickly as possible, and then get them into to, uh, to the jobs well, that Well, I hadn't that even need. heard that term before, but that makes a lot of sense in the yeah. world we live in, for well, sure. Well, I mean, I think it's these kind of like innovative ideas that can kind of come up. And the, the great thing is about this community is that we, you know, Kingston's a perfect size. We can actually bring all the key players to the same table. And we can talk about it and like, okay, so we can do this program at St. Lawrence College or, you know, we can have this employment agency, we can have keys, you know, working with, mm -hmm. you know, other businesses and basically just uh, helping to connect. You know, we, we have more and more newcomers and immigrants to, to the city that um, sometimes have great skills and, and sometimes it's just a matter of just matching them up or getting their credentials approved. And so yeah. there's all kinds of different things that we can do. But again, it's teamwork, right? That's... If there's anything that I've learned in this job, it's that teamwork <laughs> always leads to a better outcome. You, I'm going to guess you may be, if you get elected, you're going to be faced with, a, I think, a different council. If I, I mean, I took a look at yep. the, the districts, and there are multiple candidates in every district, some with like almost double-digit candidates, I think, or something, or close to it. So, I, I, I mean... A, how have you been, obviously you've cut, made your way with the existing council, but mm -hmm. now you've got to forge new ties or extend those olive branches and do all those. Because again, I mean, municipal politics is a microcosm of the provincial or the federal, right? Sure. Where every, every councillor's got their own constituents, their own needs, their own agendas and all that kind of stuff. Sure. So, Well, I mean, I think, um, so you're right, uh, close to half of the existing council is not running again. Oh, so we're gonna okay. have a, at least half of our council would be new and, and it could be more than that. So, so you're right. But I see that as, a, as always a positive. You know, I mean, I've had a tremendous privilege of working with some great people mm -hmm. around the council table. But uh, this is an opportunity for new perspectives, right? New, fresh ideas. Yeah, fair enough. Right, I think that that's, that's the beauty of how our our local democracy works is that you get new people around the table that will come up with ideas and priorities that, to be honest, I probably I wouldn't think of if it wasn't for uh, if it wasn't for them. So, yeah. you know, I think it's a it's a great time during an election to talk about the issues that matter, uh, to hear directly from the electorate. There is nothing like knocking on doors, you know, talking to people right where they're at and saying what's on your mind, uh, to really uh, strengthen a, an incoming council with with the perspective and the priorities that, okay, this is what we got to work on for the next few years. Um, going to go a little off topic uh, and, and we'll wrap it up here shortly, but um, Doug Ford passes that uh, mayoral veto power there for John Tory and for, uh, well, uh, what's his name? Jim, uh, forgotten his last name now, but he's not even going to be. Oh yeah, Jim Watson. Jim yeah, Watson, yeah, right. sorry. Yep. Uh, how did you feel about that? What, what's your comments on, on that whole thing? And well, would you have liked to have had it here in Kingston? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been a lot of discussion about it, for sure. And the province has even suggested that it is considering or may even think about extending those powers further. I mean, here's what I'll say, first of all. I'm a team player by nature. So nothing's going to change that. I, I honestly, I mean, the whole time today, I'm talking about teamwork. Yeah. 
Um, that's really important. So uh, it's never one person, you know, with all the power that can solve all the problems. It's ne that's not how it works. So honestly, it wouldn't change my style. There is some discussion among some mayors where there is something about being elected across the community. So here in Kingston, I'm the only person, or the mayor is the only person that's elected citywide. Right. And some, there is some, you get a unique perspective, yes. right? Because you're not just being elected by one area of the city, you're being elected by all areas of the city. And so naturally you just, you get a, a bigger picture view. And so there is some thought to be like, okay, well, is there a way to give that, that bigger picture view a bit of a stronger poll rather than just one of 13 mm -hmm. you know, voices around mm -hmm. the table? I think that there is some merit to that, but it really it's all about the details about what that would work. And yeah. to be honest, some of what I've seen uh, that's been proposed by the problems, I'm not really sure that that's necessarily hitting the mark either. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll wait and see. You know, there's gonna be lots of discussion about that, I'm sure, in the, the years to come. But I think, uh, I think what's more important, my priority is pushing the teamwork model that we've established here in Kingston. That's how we've gotten stuff done over right. the last few years. And so, sure. uh, why would I change that now? I yeah. mean, that's, that's the way that you push the community forward. Well, and that's a great segue. I guess we'll, we'll finish off. You, you've had eight years. You hopefully will have another four. You've, from where you've been, what you've done, what's your outlook for the Kingston? You know, it's funny. We have great challenges ahead of us, but also great opportunities. And this is what I honestly believe. I believe that in the midst of these big challenges that every community in every province across the country are facing, that this could be Kingston's moment to be a leader <laughs> in how to tackle these problems. Yeah. So almost like in the midst of the challenges that we're, that we're seeing that people are going through, that we could really show the province and the country and beyond mm -hmm. what is possible at a local level uh, with the incredible people, the assets that we have here. So, um, so even though I'm, you know, on some, some days I feel feel daunted yeah. by the challenges that are ahead. I also feel that optimism that, uh, you know, we can do great things here if we keep working together and putting our heads together and, and, and championing these new ideas and approaches uh, that I think can really work. Well, I, we'll end it at that because that's a great positive note. Listen, I wish you all the best. I've always had, enjoyed your time with me and I really appreciate you taking the time because I know you're busy, so. Thanks very much, Dicker. Appreciate right, it. Welcome.